Okay, guys, guys, take a look at this. I was sitting and reprocessing some old data from earlier this year, and I came across this. Look at that. Some kind of like red, green, blue streaks here. Very small, very tiny, going through the center of the image. Now, this is shot with a mono. Where did it go? <laughs> Yeah, there. This is shot with a mono camera, and th that likely means that I was shooting first red, then green, and then blue. So whatever it is, it was very slowly drifting through the frame. I'm not sure what it is, but I want to find out, and I'm going to take you guys along for the ride. Okay, I have a suspicion that I know what it is. I hope I know what this is, but let's see. Um, first, I just want to go and verify that this is not some kind of stacking artifact or anything like that. So I'm just opening up the raw data here. Um, oh, so I'll say raw. i just just going to open up the, um, the it's individual color channels after they've been stacked. So here we have, i uh, just rename this. What is this? This is red. Okay, now we have the red, green, and blue. As you see, I shot red first, then green, then blue. So if we take these two here. Um, and just take those to be the biggest discrepancy between those two, so the largest time gap between them. So it should be like here. Oh, well, there it is, right there, around the cursor. Find it over here also. And it's there. Okay, if we just match the zoom levels on these two, stack them on top of each other, and now, look at that. We can flip between them, and we can definitely see something that's not just random stuff. That is definitely something moving there, and we got to figure out what it is. Okay, I think the first thing I want to do is just there. You can see that the alpha and uh, two lowest number there, so those are my RA and my deck. So I'm just going to get that in the middle of the green. Okay, I got my RA and deck written down. The next thing I want to do is just to go back into the raw data here that I still have in this, in this raw form and then find the green and see I started capturing green at 21, 15, 10 and I stopped capturing the green data at 21 so 10 minutes past okay so the middle point between these two should be just around 21 21, 42 is approximately where so date wise we're really at the 29th of March I'm in Denmark so we're gonna go GMT so now we need to figure out if there exists anything in the catalog somewhere at these coordinates at this time I think before we do that I just want to do another little test here okay I just want to try to do a quick like a rough measurement of how quickly this thing was moving so it was starting at just writing down basically the, the the start location of this um and then the end location as i know that is approximately three hours of data between the start and the end here we can do a rough estimate of how quickly this thing was moving i just written down the pixel count from uh, basically just hovering over the ends of start and end of this um just to try and measure the pixel count now we should be able to just do a quick um oops do a quick delta how many pixels did it move in each direction and then we can see the total distance it moved by using Pythagoras. there we go that is the number of pixels it moved and if we check on telescopius we can see that i with the setup that was running on the night i have a pixel angular size of 2.27 arc seconds per pixel that means it was moving in that period it was moving 108.8 .8 arc seconds and that was again remember i did an hour in each channel so there's a three hour gap between the start and the end so that means this thing was moving at approximately 36.2 36.3 arc seconds per hour that's very slow it's way too slow for anything to be inside i closed worth it's not low earth orbit it could be a maybe a geo now wouldn't be geostationary satellites they would be sitting still but i don't know if they would be drifting maybe a little bit out there maybe they do i don't know but 
what I hope it is, is that it's a asteroid or a comet or something like that. I think I'm going to try to use the Skybot uh, Cone Search, um, which is an API that basically allows you to look up uh, solar system objects that exists uh, in some of these massive catalogs of like comets and asteroids that people have already found. Okay, let's see what we got here. We can see the information we typed in here and here. We can also see our search time, which we have here. And then we have, that just looks like resource name, Skyward Search Cone. Oh, it was just describing, okay, do we, we have the data? Does it find anything? Oh yeah, it did. It found one object, solar system object number. So we found object number 817, currently named Annika. Just check here. The RA is within 0.2 arc seconds of where we measured it to be and the deck is like within two arc seconds two and a bit two and a half ish arc seconds of where we measured it to be and we can see here mb what is mb object classification ah okay so ah, okay so this is a main build it is a main build object it is an asteroid Distance to observer, distance to sun, astrometric, right ascension, and declination. Okay, so that's just the, uh, it's just listed in degrees and the object listed in uh, hour, minutes, seconds kind of thing. Um, I'm going to look this up. Turns out that this particular asteroid actually has its own Wikipedia page. Discovered by M.F. Wolf. A German astronomer and pioneer in the field of astrophotography. Oh, look at that. Someone even made, based on the light curve changes, somebody made a 3D model. Clock in our Julian day. Yeah, it looks right. We draw. There we go. Can we get this in higher resolution? There we go. That is what that asteroid would have looked like on the night that I took this picture. If seen from Earth. I think this is exceptionally cool. I know it's not like a new discovery or anything like that, but by, by I mean, I wasn't looking for it. By pure accident, I've stumbled across a main belt object in my astro photos. And that I think is pretty damn cool. Thanks a lot for joining me on this little exploration, trying to figure out what it was that I captured in my photo. If you want more astrophotography content, then do subscribe to the channel. I post videos every week and it would mean a lot to me if you would. So thanks a lot and uh, clear skies. It's making all kinds of noises. Look at the pattern again. It's also blinking very differently. It's still almost constantly on. We have this random. So here we have the Veil Nebula, where you can see we have the eastern and western lobes here. And the problem is...